Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kelly Troutman. I am a certified hand therapist. A while back, somebody commented on one of my YouTube videos um, asking if I can do a little hand therapy education series on some common diagnoses that we see in hand therapy and kind of talking through um, essentially assessment, treatment, all these kinds of things um, and kind of going into each diagnosis a little bit more thoroughly, which I do think will be kind of helpful for newer grads. So um, that's what we're going to start with today. If you guys kind of like these videos, let me know if there's some suggestions that you have for me or how I can kind of better serve you and kind of help this community grow and kind of help all of us to learn. Um, let me know. Comment below. Um, today, what we're going to talk about is the carpal tunnel. This is kind of part one of this series. Um, these you know, it's a lot of information to cover in one video. This won't be completely everything. Um, there's so many different, you know, treatment ideas and kind of different philosophies. So just kind of a little overview. Today, we're going to start with anatomy because you need to know the anatomy before you can properly understand why the treatment is going to work or why we're assessing it a certain way. So that's what we're going to start with today. Um, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment below with any suggestions, um, questions, anything that you have or comments. If I'm missing something, please comment below. That way we can all learn um, and all do better by our patients. Thank you guys for watching and let's get into it. So I think a good place to start is kind of talking through the boundaries of the carpal tunnel, what actually anatomically makes up the carpal tunnel. Um, I drew some things on my iPad, so I'm going to kind of try and show you guys that way and hopefully it will work out and that you can see and not have horrible glare. Um, but essentially we've got here kind of the boundaries of the carpal tunnel, right? So we're looking at a cross section of the wrist in this view. And you can kind of see on this side, you've got the second digit or the index finger. On the other side, you're gonna have the pinky or the, you know, the fifth finger. Um, in purple here, I've got my flexor retinaculum. And then the blue arch is just representing the deep carpal arch. Oops, sorry. Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so the deep carpal arch in blue, and then you've got the four um, carpals that make up the deep carpal arch in red, you've got the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and the hamate. So that's kind of like where we're starting off, right? The boundaries um, of that carpal tunnel. Um, and then it's also important remembering kind of where the attachment points are for that transverse carpal ligament or that kind of flexor retinaculum surface, that ligament. Sorry, there's a train. Hopefully that's not too loud. Um, the attachment points radially are gonna be, of course, the scaphoid and the trapezium. And then ulnarly, the attachment points are gonna be the pisiform and the hamate bones. So those are your basic kind of attachment points for that carpal tunnel. And then it's also important to know the contents of the carpal tunnel and the kind of anatomical arrangement that they have. Um, so of course, we've got our median nerve, right? That's the nerve that's being impinged in carpal tunnel syndrome. You also have the flexor pollicis longus. You've got the flexor digitorum superficialis, right? Which is gonna bend the PIP joints and then flexor digitorum profundus, which is bending the IP joints. Um, the way that they're uh, arranged in the carpal tunnel, I've drawn like kind of a crude drawing. It is not arranged to size, but just to kind of show you like kind of the relative position. So again, taking with a grain of salt, this drawing is not perfect. Um, but just kind of showing the alignment of all of those tendons. So there's nine tendons, right, running along with the nerve through that carpal tunnel. Um, and you can kind of see they're color coded in this drawing. Um, if you'll notice too, the flexor digitorum superficialis, those tendons are kind of on top of each other. Um, and kind of a fun fact, or if you're preparing for the CHT, you'll want to know that kind of the arrangement of those. Um, and a really good way to remember it um, is by kind of aligning your fingers like this with the ring and the middle on top and then the index and the pinky on the bottom. Um, ignore the thumb. But this is the alignment of those tendons of the FDS 
running through the carpal tunnel. So they're kind of like stacked on top of each other like that um, with the ring and the middle finger on top and the index and the pinky on the bottom. Um, so kind of fun little fact there, but essentially it's good to show your patients this diagram as well, um, or kind of something similar just so that they can understand when there's any inflammation of the tendons running through that tunnel, um, any type of extra tissue, any type of thickening of the retinaculum or that transverse carpal ligament, there is just no space for anything to go. And so the nerve is really the innocent party, right? The nerve is not doing anything wrong. It's all of this extra tissue, extra inflammation, thickening of the tunnel that's causing impingement just because there's just no room for it to go anywhere else. Um, so that little nerve is just getting totally crushed in there. And over time, it'll start to almost look like a little hourglass because it's just being like pinched in the middle. Um, so that's really, I think, helpful in, in knowing yourself, but also in educating your patients about what's going on with that nerve through the carpal tunnel. It's also important to think about the dermatome coverage or the sensory coverage by the median nerve running through the carpal tunnel. Um, and this can be assessed usually by asking the patient where they feel their numbness or tingling. You always wanna ask them and never assume because sometimes they've been given a diagnosis that um, is kind of lumped as carpal tunnel, but it may not always be coming from median nerve compression through the carpal tunnel. There are loads of other places that that nerve can get impinged or overstretched or irritated. Um, so it's important to know where the sensory symptoms will be. Um, and this is, a, again, not a great picture. It's showing the palm of the hand, but it's just an illustration showing you typically where the dermatomal sensation um, coverage of the carpal tunnel, the median nerve impingement through the carpal tunnel will be. So it's going to, again, the thumb, the very tip of the thumb, um, the index, middle, and then a lot of times the kind of radial half, I guess, the palmer of the palmer side of the finger, of the ring finger as well. Um, there can be anatomical differences, right? So we all may have like slightly different dermatomal distribution, but that's just kind of showing you what is typical. Um, and then for like a better picture, um, let me show you this, uh, sorry, this picture, um, which is a, like a little bit better illustration of where that distribution will be, right? So you can see on the palm side of the hand, the yellow part is showing you through the carpal tunnel. The green part is showing you through the forearm. So you have to remember that people might come in and say, my whole hand is numb, my whole hand is numb. You might not be looking at the carpal tunnel. If people are pointing here and they say that they have numbness in their palm or tingling in the palm, there might be impingement in the carpal tunnel going to the fingers, but it might also be coming from a little bit higher. Um, so it is important to note that, and it's always important to kind of ask your patients with that as well. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind with that sensation area that the carpal tunnel is covering. Okay, so that is a very brief overview of the anatomy of the carpal tunnel. Um, I hope this video was helpful. This is part one. We are going to do part two, um, which is gonna be looking at assessment of a patient with carpal tunnel syndrome. So kind of giving you some ideas for evaluation and assessment. Um, we will get into that next. If you guys had questions or comments, or if you think I left something important out, or if you think something um, doesn't seem quite right, please feel free to comment below. Um, I want this to be a learning environment for all of us, and certainly I am not all knowing. So I think it's helpful for all of us to be able to continue to grow together and learn together. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And thank you guys so much for watching. See you in part two.